Your zap just errored out and you have no idea how to fix it. No worries, you're in good hands. Hi there, welcome back. My name is Josh Jackson and I am a certified Zapier expert. And today we're going to be talking about how to go about troubleshooting in Zapier and how to fix your zaps when they error out. If you like what you see in this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an update. So let's say you have a zap that creates a contact in HubSpot if it does not exist whenever you receive a new submission in job form. So for the most part, the zap is running well, but one day a submission is made and then you receive this error message from Zapier saying alert possible error on your create contact in HubSpot when job form submission is created zap. So how do we solve this? How do we go about this? So that's what we're going to talk about. So uh, as we scroll down here, we could see zap alert. It tells us the zap that's having the issue and also the apps that are involved. So we could see job form and we also see HubSpot. As we scroll down, we can actually see the specific error message and it's telling us there's a problem with the HubSpot event. So reading the error message, we could see it says required field, first search property value, first search property value is missing. And um, what does this mean? So to understand what this means, we have to understand the context. And to do that, we can click on edit this app to just see the general flow of this app. But the way I like to go about this is I actually like to see the zap, the specific zap run to inspect it step by step. So let's click on that. And this takes us on the specific run page. And we can see that it has a stop status. We see the name of the zap. And it tells us here that step two, find contact in HubSpot, is the step that had the issue. We could click on go to error. This will take us directly to the error. But uh, just walking you through this, let's just look at some small details. We have um, the version that the zap was run on. We have the date that the zap ran on. We have the trigger event, which tells us the data that went in and to trigger the zap and also the data that was returned by Jotform to Zapier, which is available right here. And this is our payload and we'll go through this um, in a little bit. But going into step two, which is our HubSpot step that encountered the error, we can see here that this step is finding contacts in HubSpot. And it also creates the contact in HubSpot if the contact does not exist. But what's important here is it finds the contact in HubSpot. So as we go through the error, we can see required field, first search property value, first search property value in parentheses is missing. So what does this mean? Okay, so required field. This is telling us that there's a field that's required in the HubSpot action. First search property value, what does that mean? So as we go through this and we take a look at the data in, What's important here is we look at what, what was provided, what data was provided to HubSpot and what data was missing. So those are the two important parts. So for the required field, we are defining this first search property name as, as email. So this is telling, telling HubSpot, hey, we're looking up this contact using an email address. First name, we can just ignore that. That's a different field. And what's important, Fields with no value, we have first search property value, so the value of this field, and we can see that it is missing. There was no email that was provided, no data in. So if we think about this a little bit further, we're basically telling HubSpot, hey, search for a contact using an email address. How can HubSpot find a contact if the email was not provided? So that's why we got the error. So as we scroll up here to just inspect this further, where's the email coming from, right? Where is this, where is this map to? Well, you can, you can see where it's mapped to if you actually look and you go to edit the step, you can see how the data is mapped. I like to go to the previous action or um, actually to look at the trigger, which is where this data is coming from. So if we look at the data that was provided, the data in, in the job form submission, we can see that email, is missing a value name contains a value so we can see here that email the data that was supposed to go into the hubspot action is actually missing so that's the reason let's take a look at our form just to visualize this name um, is required that's what was a name was provided but in terms of email address an email was missing so what can we do to fix this well simply it's just about fixing the data source so what do we do here let's just make this field required for email now, whenever users submit this form, 
um, they have to provide a name and they also have to provide an email address. And therefore, um, the Zap is not going to error because we're going to get the email every single time. Next, let's look at Zap run statuses. So here we are in the Zap history and we're going to look at all the statuses. So we have six possible um, Zap run statuses. We have stopped, held, waiting, filtered, success, and playing. So we have stopped, errored, and then we have stopped, halted. So what's the difference between these two? So stopped errored is when uh, one of your zap actions actually hits an error and is not able to process. So the zap stops. So that's where you'll get for the run um, a stopped errored message and then stopped halted. This one is actually an action that is taken by Zapier to prevent further zap runs. So for example, you could have um, a zap run that errors out, then you could have another um, zap run, it errors out again, the same zap, and then the third time the zap tries to, to process, it, it errors out again. So Zapier is going to then, let's say, halt the fourth run um, to prevent further runs from taking place. And that's their way of just giving you further signal to address the underlying issue so that you can rerun, you can fix the issue and the Zap can run again. Held, what does this mean? So held can be due to, to several reasons. Actually, it could be due to a disconnected app connection. Um, it could also be due to too much data coming into the, to the uh, app. You could also have um, that you exceeding your uh, Zapier plan for the monthly usage um, in terms of tasks. And um, those are the key reasons why you could have a, a held, held status. And in terms of the, the next uh, status here, we have waiting. So we have waiting delayed and waiting scheduled. So what's the difference between these two? Well, waiting delayed is if you add um, a delay action in your in your Zap. So you have an action that delays the, the Zap for five minutes or an hour, um, maybe it's 30 minutes. And so if it's, if it's, the Zap is currently processing on the waiting action that, uh, or the delayed action that you implemented, this is where you're going to see the waiting delayed status. And then you have waiting scheduled. So this is if you schedule, um, you schedule your Zap to run, you could schedule it to run on a, a, a week, a daily basis or a weekly basis. I believe you could also do it on a monthly basis as well. And if your um, Zap is currently waiting and is in a scheduled state, then this is where you'll see the, um, the waiting scheduled status filtered. So filtered status indicates that a filter step um, actually prevented the zap from running after the filter step. So it just means that your filter is working correctly. Um, as you designed it, you'll see the filtered status for the zap run. So, okay, this run got filtered and this is hopefully as you designed it. Success. Okay, success just means that your zap ran all the way through from start to finish. Uh, there were no issues um, that need to be addressed. And um, that is basically the extent of success. Playing. So if you actually look at the zap run and it's playing, it just means that it's currently processing. So what I like to do actually here is if I see playing, um, that's you know a good indicator. And I like to refresh my screen. And then um, depending on how long your zap is taking to run, um, if usually it runs in seconds. So if you refresh your screen, it's going to show playing and hopefully the next thing you'll see is success. So looking at the zap history a little bit further um, here, we can actually search for zap runs. We can filter zap runs using these date selectors and create a range. We can filter based off of zap. So say we want to filter just by send Google calendar reminder to Slack channel. This is a zap. I can click that and now you'll see it pulls the runs below. I could also select based off of the applications that are being utilized in the Zap. So let's say just Google Sheets. So we could see that here are the Google Sheets Zaps, uh, the Zaps that have a Google Sheets action in it that are running. Then we could also um, filter based off of folder and see Zap runs based on folder. And here we could just see each of the runs. So if we wanna look a little bit further here, we can just click on one of the Zap runs and we can see the full log the full trigger we can see the action so last but not least you have two very useful features here you have error notifications and you have auto replay so for error notifications if we click that we can actually configure our error notification settings and we have the default notification rules 
these are the default notification rules that apply to all the apps. So here we're just basically configuring the settings. When do we want to be notified by Zapier whenever the Zap hits an error? So here I have mine set to immediately because I like to immediately know when my Zap hits an error. This way I can go in and I can fix it right away if it's urgent. We could also set it to be hourly summary. And you could also create a custom notification rule here. You could select a Zap. Um, so here are um, the Zaps that we have. So let's just select one of these and then we could also set a frequency. So this is basically uh, the same thing. We're doing immediate uh, hourly summary or never. So we could group zaps together and create custom notification rules and then select the frequency. So this is just more specific rules tailored towards very specific zaps. So last but not least, we have the auto replay feature and I'm just going to toggle that on right now. And basically what this feature does is it allows us to auto replay any failed zap runs. So uh, any zap runs that have a stopped or a, um, an errored status, it's going to auto replay those runs. So you can configure this on an account wide basis, or you can set it to run on a per zap run basis. And it's also important to note that this feature is only available on the Zapier professional plan. If you're working through a Zapier error and you just can't crack it, I'd recommend reaching out to Zapier support to get help with the error. And if you're looking for personalized support, I'd recommend working with a Zapier expert. Here at Josh and Ocode, we build and fix Zaps for our clients. So if you're stuck on an error, feel free to reach out and we'd love to help you. And there you have it, folks. Now you know how to troubleshoot Zaps and fix errors whenever they come up. We do coded errors and we also covered the auto replay feature. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. It really helps more people just like you find this video. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on an update from Josh No Code. Keep automating and I'll see you in the next video. Happy zapping.